the first generation Al-Qaeda were digital migrants who never fully adapted their media strategy to the age of the internet, then the big change occurred with the next generation Al-Qaeda during the second war in Iraq. Those surrounding Abu Musab al-Sakawi, the leader of Al-Qaeda in Iraq, were digital natives. They were of a much younger age, were more tech-savvy, and were among the first ones to start utilizing digital new media and broadband facilities as part of their media strategy. This was a pivotal moment because it freed them from having to rely on traditional media outlets such as Al Jazeera, BBC or CNN to disseminate their messages. Abu Musab al-Zakawi certainly, I think, changed the picture because he used broadband video um, and he started showing really exciting stuff. Instead of a boring lecture on, you know, jihadist jurisprudence, it was you know, murders and executions and attacks, and it was, you know, really a precursor of what we see in ISIS now, to, uh, now today, uh, which is just much more interesting material that wasn't necessarily theological, it was more sort of action. Al-Sakawi and Al-Qaeda in Iraq became most notorious for displaying public beheading videos through YouTube, and for releasing gruesome videos and still images of hostages, mutilated bodies and suicide bombings via the internet. The first of a number of gruesome videos occurred in May 2004. It showed a group of five men, their faces covered with kafirs or balaclavas, beheading the American civilian Nicholas Berg who had been abducted and taken hostage in Iraq weeks earlier. The speaker on the tape wielding the knife that killed Burke was al Sakawi, who stated that the murder was in retaliation for US abuses in Abu Ghraib. With over one million clicks, this became the most watched terrorist attack on the internet at the time. Admittedly, the old Al-Qaeda guard around bin Laden had done something similar in 2002 with the video depicting the execution of Daniel Pearl. But Al-Sakawi took this to a whole new level. Releasing beheading videos became his trademark and broadband internet allowed for the unedited dissemination of these gruesome displays. The effect of these strategies has been mixed. On the one hand, public beheading videos and the display of vicious violence shocked Western audiences. It impacted on European elections and resulted in the withdrawal of several members of the US-led coalition in Iraq, amongst them Spain and the Philippines. Al-Qaeda in Iraq really succeeded uh, in, in a very important goal with these beheading videos, which was to get, to make it much harder for Westerners to function in Iraq. So, you know, you kill a couple of businessmen and some aid workers and, you know, suddenly no one wants to come for good reason. And um, so I think the strategic reasoning was to uh, a, a, show that they were powerful, but B, to, uh, to impede any kind of Western efforts to build up Iraq. And it worked. I mean, I think that the Al-Qaeda in Iraq, uh, it, you know, was their campaign of violence that included these beheading videos, but also included other things, um, meant that by 2006 they controlled a you know, third of Iraq and they were, they were doing very well. On the other hand, the horrific display of violence also backfired. It was strongly condemned by Al-Qaeda Central, the old Al-Qaeda guard, who ordered Zakawi to refrain from such practices. It was an order that Sakavi refused to follow. In the medium term, however, the gruesome violence alienated local Iraqis and resulted in Al-Qaeda losing its stronghold in Iraq after 2006. At the same time, however, the second generation of Al-Qaeda fighters also started utilizing the internet as a platform to radicalize and recruit young Muslims for jihad. And they were amongst the first groups to use chat forums to discuss and refine strategies against coalition forces, to share instructions for building weapons and for conducting suicide attacks. 
Despite the gruesomeness and the violence displayed, what we see with the advent of the second generation Al-Qaeda is the merger between terrorist groups and the media. The gravitation towards advanced technologies such as the internet and the evolution into what people have called Al-Qaeda 2.0.